Fashion Girlhood, The Adultification of Black Girls, a presentation by Neha Joshi. So to understand the adultification of black girls, we must first discuss the sociology of race and ethnicity, as this is a kernel of discrimination based on race. Within the sociological framework of conflict theory, which focuses on understanding unequal distributions of power, it sees race as a tool used by empowered groups to dominate by creating, creating and encouraging ethnic differences, the enforcement of ethnic boundaries, and racial stereotyping. To extend on this, the feminist approach called intersectionality, a term first coined by Kimberly Crenshaw in 1989, it sees race, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, and other uh, social, cultural, and biological categories as things that intersect and overlap to create different forms of oppression. In the case of black girls, the, their experiences in relation to systemic and institutional racism and policies are different than that of black boys, despite having the same racial identity. So the principles of institutional racism. As the Black Lives Matter movement continues to grow and create change and illuminate experiences of inequality, the language and discourse of the systemic and institutional racism has become all too familiar. However, what is institutional racism? So this term has first been coined by Kwame Ture and Charles Hamilton in their 1967 book, Black, pa Black Power. They introduced the term to account for attitudes and practices that led to racist outcomes through unquestioned bureaucratic procedures. To Ture and Hamilton, individual and institutional racism is comparable to the distinction made between overt and covert racism. Unlike individual racism, inst institutional racism is more subtle and unclear to the eye. The concept was further developed to refer to discrimination based on common practices and formal rules, like policies such as stop and frisk, that are so entrenched that the racism embodied in these things is normalized. But what is the root of institutional racism? How we become a race? How do we become a race? Racialization, race socialization. So racialization refers to two processes. So the institutional process of defining the group by racially categorizing them according to their physical appearance, such as the census, as well as the tendency to view and group humans according to their visible characteristics. So the second process is based on the belief that traits are inherent to race. So this then produces and perpetuates discrimination by coding certain behaviors into ethnicity and race, as well as stereotyping. For example, the belief that certain races are more academically inclined than others. Race socialization is a process in which people learn to perceive and judge others and selves according to presumed racial and ethnic differences. This is different depending on the context, such as um, purposeful um, uh, racial socialization, such as the police talk or the talk as we know it, versus um, unapparent um, choices made, such as the advertisement of certain dolls over other dolls. So life stage dissolution. This is the erosion of life stages such as uh, childhood, adolescence, and adulthood, and the blurring of the generational lines between the lines between them. So an example of uh, life stage dissolution, as explained by George Law, with, with the George University Law, where they described um, adultification as this specifically applies to black girls. It is the ways in which youth are prematurely exposed to adult knowledge and assume adult responsibilities and the stereotype based on how adults perceive children in the absence of knowledge of the child's behavior and verbalization. The second point is especially um, important to the case of black girls as the assumption that they are um, aggressive, um, bashful, like aggressive and things like that are applied to their understanding of black girls as children. So what I explained before is the talk. So the talk between white Americans and black Americans is quite different. So the talk as we know it for white Americans is just something that is seen as the sex talk. So the birds and the bees versus um, for American for black Americans, it is the adultification of young black children to let them know um, how society sees them based on their race. This talk essentially has them have to assume certain responsibilities to protect themselves and remove and uh, removes their 
childhood appearance. So what becomes of black girlhood, the adultification of black girls? So as I explained before, um, child, childhood as we know it is um, the framing of children as objects of sentiment and to be protected and nurtured, as well as understanding childhood as being a period where children do not need to assume adult responsibilities. However, this is not something that is granted to black girls. So as George Law study reveals, black girls are likened more to adults than to children and are treated as if they are willfully engaging in behaviors typically expected of black women. This has stripped black girls of their childhood freedoms and renders black girlhood interchangeable with black womanhood. The adultification bias that they revealed in the education system as well as the juvenile system sees that black girls are three times more as likely to be assumed to be aggressive as well as experience harsher punishments to their white peers as well as three times more likely to be confronted by um, judicial actors such as um, police officers through the assumption that they're much older than they actually are and they're more capable of aggressive behavior. So if authorities in public systems such as school view black girls as less innocent, less needing of protection, and generally more like adults, it appears likely that they would also view black girls as more culpable for their actions and punish them more harshly based on, this, based on their status as children. So rather than seeing them as children and dealing with them as children, they are treated with um, the assumption that they are adults. So this leads to the disproportionate, disproportional um, harsher treatment in um, school. So they face much more discipline for the same actions. They have harsher treatment by law enforcement and differentiated treatment by officials in juvenile justice systems. So the comparison is often made between the treatment of white men versus black girls. So white men that commit actual crimes or are infantilized in media versus uh, black girls from like the age of nine with the recent meeting of a 10 year old girl um, at a protest, seeing them as objects of threat and being adults that should be treated that way rather than children that did nothing wrong. So the impact of growing up too fast is different than just in the educational and judicial, judicial system. There's also the example of the missing white girl syndrome. So the missing white girl syndrome is the fact that in America, the media portrayal of missing white girls is a lot more apparent and present in media than that of missing black girls. So a study done has revealed that black kids, not just black girls, um, make up about 37% of the children that are missing in America, even though there are about 14% of all children in the United, United States. Their coverage is only about two to three percent of all media coverage on nationwide media, not comparing to Twitter, which does advocate for them more. So the example is also given to the disappearance of Asia Degree, a nine-year-old girl that was missing that was found missing from her bed in February 2000. So the investigation of her was quite minimal. The um, witnesses that did see her, so a man that was driving by her on a highway saw that she was actually um, just, she looked scared, but she was walking by herself, but he assumed that she knew what she was doing, so he did not intervene and try to find out what was wrong, and to this day she is still missing. So what can be done? So as George, the George Law study on the adultification of black girls shows that there should be a study of discrepancies the study of discrepancies should allow an acknowledgement of the bias and to kind of work through this there should be developmental training both in education and the judicial system to recognize black girls as being children and recognizing them as being girls and they have an intersectional experience in terms of oppression as well as reforming systems to undo the adultification bias so it is important to note that the final quote that I do want to end with is that black girls possess varied experiences and skills, all of which need to be viewed as strengths. There are multitudes of ways of being a black girl and no one set of behavior should be expected or demanded from them to be given equal opportunity. Thank you.